In this Wrestle Talk news, WWE star thought Vince McMahon wrestling again was a terrible idea. Sasha Banks considers leaving WWE for Hollywood, and Charlotte Flair is disappointed with her championship run, plus so much more. So subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! Now, one of the weirder moments, but larger nostalgia pops of WrestleMania 38 this weekend was Vince McMahon returning to the black vested Mr. McMahon for a match with Pat McAfee and a sort of clumsy confrontation with Stone Cold Steve Austin, including the world's worst stunner cell, like every bone in his body had magically disappeared, like he was Senator Kelly from X-Men 1. I watched that yesterday. Great film. Fightful Select have been talking to those backstage and dug up some interesting info. They're reporting that Vince made the decision to wrestle on the show months ago, and numerous people close to him and on the creative team vocally expressed that they thought it was a terrible idea. Oh, you dear sweet silly idiots. Never badmouth Vince. I mean, as Vince said in his Pat McAfee interview, he surrounds himself with very clever people, and he chooses to ignore them most of the time. And that's the thing, they were proved right, because it wasn't, it wasn't very good. It was funny and nostalgia-inducing, but good it was not. And the folks that Fightful spoke to said plenty of laughs were had by the team and Vince himself following the event, and the line was given that McMahon realised it was a terrible performance, especially the stunner cell, but said that as long as people were laughing and entertained, it's okay. Fightful were also told that Vince laid out the entire post-match angle, including Austin Theory's music hitting before Stone Cold's theme came in, which Vince then reacted to like it was Stone Cold's, which also gave everyone backstage a good laugh. I mean, so long as they're having fun, eh, folks? I mean, to be fair, I think we all had fun with the stunner. It's basically replaced pictures of nice dogs for me. It's a great little pick-me-up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go down. Now, the life of a WWE superstar is hectic. Hours traveling, training, and performing with very little downtime. So trying to cram in any other endeavors into that must be madness. Which is exactly what Sasha Banks went through when she joined the cast of The Mandalorian, as she told Logan Paul during an impulsive interview. It's kind of really hard to do with the WWE schedule, she said. I mean, when I shot The Mandalorian last year, I went from doing TV, doing live events, and then just getting on a plane to Los Angeles, shooting all week, getting on a red eye, going back to TV, putting my hair in, taking my hair out for three months, and it was just Wow. Paul had asked Banks if she was intending to take over the world on a scale of Dwayne Johnson, i.e. transitioning from wrestling to a top Hollywood star, which prompted Banks to say that she would have a very difficult decision to make in that case. So if we're going to take over the world, it's like I got to choose one or the other. I really have to sit back and think, what's next, you know? Is it full-time Hollywood? Is it full-time doing something else that I have passions about? Or is it still being here and making more history and changing the game and leaving a legacy that's cemented forever, adding wistfully, I feel like I'm already a Hall of Famer. What is that last legacy piece that I can leave here? I'm still searching for it. Visit WrestleShop.com every day for the most stupendous in wrestling merchandise. WrestleShop.com, wrestling merch for grown-ups. Someone else having a bit of an existential WWE crisis is SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, who is less than impressed with her current run with the belt. Now, the whole thing kicked off last October when she swapped the Raw Women's Championship with Becky Lynch in a segment that seriously went off the rails and had a lot of backstage reporting about it. Now, Chaz has been reflecting in an interview with Ariel Helwani for BT Sports, saying she isn't thrilled with her reign thus far. She said, I can't say that this title reign has been one of my favourites because I haven't had an opportunity, due to unfortunate events, to defend the title as many times as I would like, adding that the feud with Tony Storm was one of the low points for her. She said, well, like Tony Storm in the middle of our storyline, she left and then there hasn't really been anyone on SmackDown. I had the opportunity to face Naomi in a title match on SmackDown and I've been wanting to wrestle her for five years, so I would have liked to be more of a fighting champion. Now, the interview was conducted before Flair handed Ronda Rousey her first singles loss at WrestleMania, so maybe her perspective has changed since then. Somebody else whose perspective has changed recently is Cody Rhodes, because he can see the crowd during his entrance now, which he couldn't at WrestleMania. Look at his little potato face. He also has returned to WWE. Have you heard? I don't know. It's, it's been a whole thing. So far, we've seen the American Nightmare at WrestleMania night one and at Raw, where he addressed the crowd. But he is also now apparently 
on the road. PW Insiders Mike Johnson said that Cody is scheduled to be at tonight's SmackDown taping. It is unknown whether Cody will be on TV, but wrestlers from different brands have been working dark matches recently on SmackDown. It is also worth bearing in mind that Cody's goal, as he said on Raw, is to win the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. So a confrontation with Roman Reigns, who is set to address the SmackDown crowd tonight, could be on the cards. That is one to look out for. Now, someone noticeably absent from WrestleMania was Alexa Bliss, who hasn't been seen in WWE since Elimination Chamber and the therapy session skit she had in the run-up to that event. A recent report revealed that despite there being an Alexis Playground set at WrestleMania Access, Bliss was not in Dallas for the show last weekend. PW Insider has reported that Bliss's absence is due to her upcoming wedding to Ryan Cabrera. The couple are set to be wed in Palm Springs this weekend, so basically it's crunch time. It's a toss-up between the show of shows and making 100 to 200 wedding favours, because those sugared almonds aren't going to put themselves into the tiny glass jars, are they? Also absent from WrestleMania this year was Metalingus, Edge's famous theme as he transitioned to using a new broodier one by the band Alter Bridge instead, which puts the dream of seeing the theme played live on the grandest stage of all to bed for a bit. Now, a fan on Facebook contacted the band and told them that they were disappointed that they didn't get to see Alder Bridge play Edge to the Ring live at Mania. And then the band's manager, Tim Tournier, got involved and revealed that back at Mania 36, that was something in the works, saying, we actually booked this in 2020. It was all set. Everyone was getting ready to fly in, but it got cancelled due to COVID. WWE and Edge have been great to us over the years. We love them and would jump at any opportunity to work with them. If you've been watching AEW, you'll have noticed that Matt Hardy is back in the t-shirts, two sizes too small as he teams with his brother Jeff in AEW in a revamp of sort of Team Extreme style Hardys. But Matt is always looking to some of his other creations for inspiration, and one that was incredibly successful for him previously was the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. Just not in AEW. Speaking on the extreme life of Matt Hardy, he said he would love to bring the gimmick back to AEW and start a web series with all the characters. He said, I want to bring back the Broken Universe at some point, even when I'm not wrestling in the ring full time and make it a small series and try to put it on a platform somewhere because it was just so much fun. I would love to sit back and hook up with JB, Jerry Borash and Jimmy Long and do this and make it into an entertaining series. Now the Broken gimmick started out in Impact and pioneered cinematic wrestling matches pre-pandemic era. Matt also debuted as Broken Matt for AEW, but seemingly was hamstrung a little bit by the lack of crowds during this time and the character was eventually dropped in favour of Hardy Family Office, Matt Hardy. Finally, one of the more shocking bits of news this week were the allegations of emotional and physical abuse levelled at NXT's Nash Carter, which reportedly led to WWE firing him. Carter's wife, Kimberly, tweeted the allegations along with pictures, including one of Carter sporting a toothbrush moustache and making a Nazi salute. During Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez spoke about the firing, saying that it was the Hitler photo that got Carter released, as Alvarez said people in WWE did not believe Lee's allegations. He said, what I was told is that the reason they won the tag team titles this weekend, even though the allegations were already out there, the reason that happened was because it was not believed that Kimberly was reliable. That was what I was told. They did not believe her story. NXT, I don't know what kind of investigations they do. I don't know what happened. Whatever happened, they determined that she was not credible. That's why they put the tag team titles on MSK. Dave Meltzer later added that his understanding of WWE's position was, Vince McMahon had allegations against him multiple times over the years. So if he is to believe that Carter is innocent, then he has to presume that other people that claims are made about may be innocent. So he's not a guy who was going to find everybody the minute somebody says something. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm just saying that's the situation. Mel's also added that in NXT they are very sympathetic towards him. Gigi, of course she is, because she is the girlfriend. Toxic Attraction's Gigi Dolan posted the following on Twitter after the firing, this world makes me sick. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Adam Blompier and I am the reason you got into wrestling. Now at WrestleMania 38, as some of you may be aware, I became your Unified Jam That Champion. Both these titles are quite heavy, and I have sat through one live stream with them both on my shoulders, and I won't be doing that again. Frankly, this situation will not stand and will need to be rectified. I am not a manual laborer. I am a comedian. I am an on-air personality. I am the talent. So what I will be doing, well, let's just say that the situation will be rectified. We have plans for the next step, and we'll tell you all about those plans very soon.
So the, uh, the biggest part of that trailer, for me at the very least, yeah. is the kids. Right. The kids that we saw from, uh, from WandaVision. Yeah, back that, in uh, Westview. Yes, that she had to say goodbye to mm -hmm. in the final episodes. Mm. Well, and then, spoilers, we heard them. <laughs>